How are you doing? I'm really well. I'm really chuffed. We had a good show last night. How was it? Well, the audience was amazing. They were so open and it was a, it was a conversation, so intimate. There were quite many uh, foreign fans. Uh, are they traveling with you? Well, I'm doing a, a run in Scandinavia right now. So some people are coming to, I think, more than one show. They were really dedicated. And uh, <laughs> are you scared of that kind of fans who are so into you? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not scared. I think the truth is people connect with certain songs. They have relationships with the songs. It's not necessarily about me. It's about the music and the songs. And I understand that. Uh, your latest album came out last year. Um, what are you planning to make some more new music now? We're working on a project called The Light Princess, and it comes out in September. So I've been producing that with the original cast, and that's been an absolute blast. How was it uh, to make a musical? Well, musical is a very tricky thing because it's the most collaborative art form. And the challenge is always to have the songs moving the story forward, not slowing the story down, pulling it back, but moving it forward. So it's a very different type of form. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed working with my writing partner, Samuel Adamson. He's just so uh, clever and fun, fun to work with. So is it going to be on Broadway also? Fingers crossed, one day. But I want to do it right. There are a lot of things that go to Broadway that don't work, that close more quickly than I think the cast would want it to. So in order to have legs in order to really have the run you want to have you well you need some luck on your side you need to make sure that you're with the right commercial producers so this is our first venture the album into the commercial world we haven't been involved with any commercial producers yet because it was state funded in britain and it was in rep so it wasn't it wasn't a block time um, and therefore, our first step is with Universal, the record label, and that's exciting. But I'm taking our steps um, gingerly because it, it, it needs to be with the right people. And if you think about your career, where are you standing at this moment? Um, I'm very fortunate to have uh, the opportunities to make music that I'm inspired to make or driven, driven to make. It depends on the stories at the time and the experiences that are changing the way I see things that then bring these song girls into my life. And to be able to be making records still after so many years, um, I, I don't take it for granted. I understand that it's a privilege to make music. And it's very difficult in the music industry right now for a lot of people to sustain. It's almost as if the public can move through an artist very quickly and, and move on to the next. So to have a career that lasts for 10 years, much less 25, is, is unusual now. So I don't, I don't take it for granted what, um, what an opportunity that I, I have to make music. And I'm very grateful. How is the music business for a uh, woman in your age? Well, there are more record deals for men my age than there are for women. And 
if you, if you really think about it, it's different than the movie industry because it's not as if you come to a concert to hear a grandma sing songs. So a songwriter uh, has to be able to tell all kinds of stories. And it's not about a role, so you're, you're playing a role of a woman who is a grandmother. Whereas films, um, you might say, well, Helen Mirren, Judi Dench, all these people are working, and that's great. Meryl Streep, and so on. That's the generation above. And if you think about, um, you know, you don't go see Bruce Springsteen to go hear a granddad tell stories. You go to see a cool guy that has some experience and some wisdom, and he, he's ageless, because when he gets behind the microphone, he's the storyteller. And our culture is very youth-driven, that the same rules applying to women. You know, a guy with a, a beard and a pot belly, it can still be a turn-on for some people because of their, of their wisdom. So that's an aphrodisiac when it's coming from men. And it really is about us as women claiming that wisdom can be sexy. What kind of stories do you want to tell right now? All kinds, all kinds of things are starting to orbit my world. There are a lot of changes happening um, that I'm noticing with my parents, for example. So I'm, I'm lucky that my parents are still alive. They're, they're in their late 80s. And they, um, I want them around. I really, really want them around. And they're talking to me about memories that they've had. So I'm collecting some of these stories. And it's not just about, as they said, old folks with stories. It's about things they remember over the last 80-some years that are, that are kind of, I don't know, um, making me think in ways that I haven't in a while. What kind of things are they? Well, um, for example, my mother is very troubled. She doesn't understand why so many teenagers are cutting themselves. And she would talk to me about, um, and my father would talk to me about when they were kids, <laughs> about whipping, whippings, and that it was okay to punish a teenager um, with a form of violence. And now there are teenagers punishing themselves. And I watched my mother speak to me about it. And what drew me in as an observer was how she was trying to work out how in, I don't know, 60 years, um, or 70 years, this self-punishing is rampant. And, it, and it, she had tears in her eyes when she talked to me about it. I think she just wanted to go and hold each teenager and give them love and support. And it was a story of watching this 80-something-year-old woman that has so much love to give want to relate and understand why teenagers around the world are cutting themselves. So these kinds of stories, it's the frame, though, for the story. It's not just about the cutting. It's about the cutting through the point of view of an 80-something-year-old that wanted to just sit and hold hands with them. So is this going to be your music? Don't know. It's circling. That's how, as a writer, you begin forming your next structure. You just, you have to observe. Being a musician is really about, 
is about listening. So when do you think you are going to make your next solo album? I don't know. I'm not sure. Once The Light Princess comes out, then I can start thinking about that. But that'll be out end of September. So once we finish these shows, we go back into the studio to mix to mix it. And it's very exciting. I, I want to get it out to the world. And then once we do, then I can move on. Thank you very much. Thank you.